I've been dating my girlfriend for three years now. I'll nickname her Nikki. It started innocently enough that I commented on one of her Instagram stories and we started chatting from there. Eventually I got her number and then Snapchat, and after a week we met in person. We started hanging out right after the holidays in January, and the thought of Valentine's Day was already coming up. It was nice having started talking to a girl around that time so that I wouldn't feel the dread of being alone on that annoying holiday. But as Valentine's Day approached and Nikki and I were a few dates in, she confided in me about a stalker situation she'd been dealing with. The man's name is Ben, and he's a guy a few years older than Nikki who happened to go to the same commuter college as her, met her in class for a group project, and followed her around campus a few times. She never involved police or anything, shockingly. Hearing that this guy found out where she lived, sent her a bunch of creepy texts which she ignored. She said she never blocked the number because she wanted to see how far he would go without getting the hints. When I gauged why she was choosing now to bring this to my attention, she said because he started reaching out to her again, specifically for Valentine's Day. As you can see here, he started ramping up the texting again as Valentine's Day approached. She continued to just ignore it and let the texts pile up, but he brought it to the next level when he left a box of Russell Stover chocolates on her doorstep. She knew it was from him because he texted her, I hope you like the gift I left you. This was when she decided to put an end to it and replied to him a long message which I won't share for her privacy, but in short, she said he needs help and that she's seeing someone now so to leave her alone. There are a number of ways to get someone's address this day and age, but she was scared that he got it by following her home one day. I did my best to make sure that she knew I wouldn't let him do anything to her. Well, fast forward maybe a few days, and Nikki sent me a concerning screenshot. It was a screenshot of some text from a fake number, asking if the guy she was seeing was me. Me as in, he wrote my name. Now I felt involved, and that made me feel moderately uncomfortable. To this point, all I've heard of this guy was that he was a very creepy and overly persistent texter and potentially followed the girl I'm seeing home to her house. And now he's texting her on fake numbers bringing up my name. It was reaching the point where Nikki was close to calling the police if this didn't stop. I told her I'd go to the police station with her if he reached out one more time. Fast forward to Valentine's Day. It was on a Friday this year. Nikki and I went out to eat at a nice restaurant that sat on the water. We were at an outside table because the weather was nice. As we ate, we both took notice to a guy sitting on a bench outside of the dining area by the parking lot with a hat conspicuously pulled down his face as if he were hiding. Nikki made a joke, what if that's Ben? We laughed, but then he slightly tilted his head in our direction as we were looking at him, and then he quickly looked away, and seconds later he got up and walked away. We weren't laughing anymore. Now we actually questioned the chances of that actually being him, but after a few minutes, the conversation shifted to something else, and we enjoyed the rest of our time there. Afterwards, we wanted to keep hanging out. It was Valentine's Day after all, but her parents were home. I had the place to myself, so we went together back to my rental house. We were on the couch, and things were getting a bit more intimate. That's when Nikki pulled away from me and said, what was that? I heard it too. Something from outside in the backyard. Want me to go check? I asked. She nodded her head. I went out to the backyard patio, expecting to hear some animals scurrying off in reaction to my presence. I slipped on my slides and walked around the yard, looking around for anything that could have fallen over, and I found what made the noise. The entire stack of beach chairs that was leaning on the house had been knocked over. I don't know how that would happen unless someone or something bumped into them. There wasn't even the slightest breeze that night. I looked around at the bushes that encompassed our yard, and then, as if my brain immediately could spot something out of place, I locked in my vision on something tall in the bushes. My neck jutted forward as I literally tried to focus in and get a better look at what I was looking at. I stepped forward a few steps. I had an oh shit moment when I realized it was someone standing in the bushes. He had seen me notice him by this point. I said, who is that? And the guy started quickly coming out from the bushes, in a quick enough speed that I took it as a threat as if he were about to charge at me. I took the chance to get him on the ground when he was still struggling with the bushes and twigs, and I yelled at him to stay down multiple times. I yelled Nikki's name until she came outside, and I said call the police. The guy on the ground struggled and tried to get loose a few times, but I more or less had him in a steady hold. 
When Nikki came outside while talking with the police, I asked her if this was the guy. She gasped and said, oh my god, yes. It was the Ben guy who had been harassing her. What's worse is at that moment, I realized he was wearing the same colored shirt that guy with the cap from earlier at the restaurant was wearing. Police got to the house and put him in cuffs. He would be charged with trespassing. And taking advantage of the moment, Nikki showed the officers all of the harassing and obsessive messages she'd been receiving from him. Since he was already being arrested, Nikki pressed charges for stalking and harassment, which the guy ultimately ended up paying a fine for and getting a misdemeanor. Nikki got an order of protection against him, and now if he ever contacts her again, he'll be arrested again. Ben was the ultimate creep. Thank God he's at least halfway smart enough to not have contacted her again, though. This happened four years ago. Valentine's Day was coming up. My boyfriend and I had planned a cute dinner like what most couples do. As we were walking into the restaurant, there is this couple outside weirdly staring at my boyfriend and I. I slightly shove my boyfriend's arm as we get inside, and he gives out his name to be put in the wait line. The host said it would be a 45 minute wait, and she said she would text us when our table was ready. My boyfriend said let's go to the mini golf across the street, so we're walking back to his car. The lady from the couple stood up and held up her hand introducing herself as Mrs. Gretty. I found it really weird and looked at my boyfriend. The lady still had her hand out. I wasn't trying to be rude, I gave her a shake. The lady went on to explain that her and her husband think we're a great looking couple and they're photographers and think we would make great photos and to follow them to the studio as she believes the wait time will be long. She goes on to say that she has no card on her, but their place was a five minute drive away and they could take us there as well. Red flags are going off, and my boyfriend politely declines and lets her know we have things to do. The look was still one of the most haunting looks ever as she smiled and sat down next to the husband. As we get in the car, I tell my boyfriend how creepy that interaction was, and how the husband didn't even say a word. As we enter the mini golf place, we were pretty surprised to find it empty. We laugh the situation off, but in reality, I'm still creeped out. As this place is not really huge, you can see the front door on all the levels. So as we're on our fifth round, I hear the entrance bell ring. I turn to look and my heart sinks. It's the same lady with her husband. She seems to look around and then as we make eye contact, she gives me the creepiest smile. I let my boyfriend know and he turns to look as they're getting their things. I tell my boyfriend I'm uncomfortable and we should just go wait in the car as 15 minutes have passed already so it wouldn't be much longer. He agrees and we turn around and they're right behind us, giving us the widest smiles. Crazy how we both came to this spot, said Mrs. Gretty. This time the husband says, we should face each other, Gretty versus Rod. My boyfriend's heart sank in that moment as his last name is Rod's. We politely declined, not wanting to know how they knew that information, and we said we have to go. Both of their smiles faded as we rushed out of there. I told my boyfriend we should just call it a night and go back to his place since it was closer than mine. Plus, my parents wouldn't be home until Sunday morning. He said we would go after dinner and not let some random weird couple ruin the night for us. We waited about 15 minutes in his car, talking about how weird the situation was as he gets a text from the restaurant saying they're ready for us. We eat dinner and he insists on paying today since it's Valentine's Day, as we usually split the bill. He goes to the bathroom, and as I'm waiting, I thought I saw that lady peeking out from around a corner. I convinced myself it was just in my head. My boyfriend gets out and is ready to go. Now to get to his place. You have to take this long road surrounded by trees. As we start the drive, we notice a car following behind. I let my husband know, and we head into a CVS parking lot. I have to use the restroom, and since it was going to be a drive, we both get out and go. When we come out, we don't see that car that was potentially following us anywhere, so we make our way to his house. You know that road I talked about earlier being surrounded by trees? Well, while we're driving on it, we're like three to five minutes onto this road. We heard a loud pop, and my boyfriend stopped his car. His two front tires had popped. He put two and two together and ran to the car and said, get out, there's not much more time before they get here. He cut his engine and turned off the lights and locked the door. I was so scared and confused, not knowing what was going on. I told him we should wait in the car. 
He quickly got me and we ran into the woods. He told me to shush. We were hiding behind some trees and bushes. While we hid, he called the cops and quickly explained where we were at and what was happening. The operator asked to stay on the line and the cops would be here in a couple minutes. He said he couldn't stay on the line and hung up. As we stayed laying down, we heard a car engine coming up. My boyfriend said to lay flat as he did too. We heard the engine to the car stop and we heard the familiar voice of Mrs. Greddy, if that was even her real name. She yelled, shit, we took too long. We heard a car door close and then a car quickly speed away. We stayed down until the cops got there, which was about two minutes later. We explained the situation and got told we would be contacted if something came up. I called my sister to come pick us up, and he called the tow truck for his car. Four years later, nothing has come up on it, and we never found out what they wanted or who they were. We're now married with a crazy story to tell our kids. During the fall 2018 semester, I was doing some online classes through a pretty prestigious college, but I knew that I would transfer to my hometown four-year university for the winter semester. I still wanted to make some new friends though so that I wouldn't feel alone, and maybe along the way it would be nice to meet someone to date, which is what happened. I met this girl through Tinder. She was really cool and we had a lot in common. Long story short, we started dating and we had a lot of fun together. She wasn't from my hometown and I had noticed that after she came back from Thanksgiving break, the way she behaved and her attitude had changed. She was always on the more sarcastic side, but now it just seemed mean. For example, the playful, flirtatious teasing had become way more aggressive. There was no physical harm, I should say that. It was just the kind of teasing that shouldn't be happening in a relationship. I just brushed it off as stress due to finals approaching. She eventually went back home for winter break. We always found ways to stay in touch every day, such as text, snap, and occasional FaceTime, either once or twice a week. Once the winter semester started, I moved into an apartment because the dorms didn't seem that fun, and I had found something nice that was surprisingly cheap. Literally the night of the first day of classes, we decided to break up. Like I said, she was from a different state, and she was having a lot of trouble being away from home because she missed her family, friends, and pets a lot. Besides me and her roommate, who she didn't really get along with, she barely knew anybody in town. She was just such a shy person. And that's not a bad thing, but like I said, she didn't have a lot of friends to surround herself with. So she just wanted to be by herself all the time. So it was a nice exit out without having to be the one that did the dumping because that kind of stuff just gives me too much stress and anxiety. A few weeks went by, and each day I felt a little less sad because when I looked back on the relationship, there were a bunch of issues that I had overlooked. It was the week leading up to Valentine's Day, and I was kind of sad because I had some fun things planned that I wanted to surprise my girlfriend with. I decided that maybe for that week, I would reactivate my Tinder account, really to see if I could get a match and possibly hang out with someone on the holidays so I wouldn't be alone because most of my friends had their own boyfriends and girlfriends. I did about two days before the holiday, and I got some matches after a few hours of having the app. I chatted with most of them and asked what their Valentine's Day plans were. And not to my surprise, they were all going out to bars. Personally, that lifestyle isn't really my thing. It just doesn't seem that fun to me. But I always use it as a last resort, and I wasn't that desperate. Yet. I eventually started texting with a girl named Alex, who wasn't into that stuff either. She would rather stay in and watch movies, which is what I would rather be doing too. She even had the same major as one of my best friends, and was taking some of the classes he was taking but she didn't know if they had classes at the same time since they had just started and she was trying to figure out everyone's names. The best way to describe Alex is that she had shoulder length blonde hair, cute glasses, freckles, and bright blue eyes. After texting for about an hour, I got her Snapchat and we moved the conversation there. I asked if she would want to hang out on Valentine's Day and she was down. So it was Valentine's Day 2018, which had fallen on the Thursday of the week. Luckily, I didn't have any Friday classes, and Alex said she would skip her Friday morning class so we wouldn't feel pressured to end the night so early. The first part of the night went pretty smooth. We got some McDonald's, saw a movie, and then walked around the downtown area for a while. To spare you the details, we eventually went back to my apartment and had sex, and to be honest, everything went great. She asked if she could spend the night because it was snowing out, and her place was about a 10-minute walk away. So, of course, I told her she could stay. 
we eventually fell asleep around 1 a.m. I'm a pretty light sleeper, especially when there's someone else in the bed with me. Around 3 a.m., Alex woke me up as she was getting out of the bed, but I didn't make her aware that she woke me up. It was pretty dark in the room, but I could see that she was walking towards the bathroom. She turned the light on and shut the door so that it wouldn't seep into the bedroom. I was very tired, so I just went back to sleep. I awoke again around 5.30 a.m., and to my surprise, Alex wasn't in the bed next to me. I turned to see if she was still in the bathroom, but I couldn't see the outline of the light, so that meant it was turned off. I wasn't in too much of a shock yet. I was just curious as to where she was. So I sat up and grabbed my phone off my bedside table. I didn't have any texts from her saying that she had left, but I was able to see that the clothes she had been wearing earlier were still on the ground next to mine. So she was still here somewhere. I then heard a creak come from the other side of the bedroom. I could see that Alex was just standing in the corner, back facing toward me. I was really freaked out. I quietly called out her name and asked if she was okay, but there was no response. I turned on the lamp I had on the bedside table. It didn't create too much light, but there was enough. I got out of bed and walked over to her. She was just standing there, not even moving. I was so creeped out, but I wanted to see what was going on. I gently placed my hand on her shoulder and said her name again, and there was no response. There were 10 seconds of silence, and right as I was about to say her name one more time, she turned around at an inhuman speed and started screaming like a maniac and hitting me. It wasn't the hardest of hitting, but I'm kind of a skinny guy, so it hurt a bit. The scariest part is there was no emotion on her face at all. I backed up and fell over onto my bed, and she followed me, still screaming and hitting me. After about 30 seconds of this happening, she ran over to her clothes, grabbed them, and ran out of my apartment. I got off the bed and ran to my front door, which was left wide open, and she was gone. I shut it and locked it. I then noticed there was a horrible smell coming from the bathroom. The door was shut, and when I opened it, the horrible stench came out. I turned on the light and found the room in a mess. The shower curtain was ripped off, my medicine bag had been thrown on the ground, and my floor was wet. The worst part was that she defecated and smeared it on the mirror. I called the police immediately, and they sent an officer to my place. They asked if they could see her Tinder and Snapchat profile, but of course, both had been deleted. I only had one picture of her that she sent on Snapchat, and I had screenshotted it because it was a cute looking picture, but she was using a Snapchat filter in the picture. Sadly, there was not really much police could do except take a report and keep an eye open for her in the area. They advised me to have a friend sleep over later that night in case she would try to break in, which is what I did. I called one of my best friends, Rob. He was the one who had the same major as Alex. He came over later that night and I told him the whole story. One of the classes she said she was taking that my friend was also taking as well was a pretty small class that only met twice a week. I showed Rob the picture I had, and when I asked Rob if he knew her, he said he had never seen her in class. Rob and I watched a movie and fell asleep around 12 a.m. I awoke around 3 a.m. to find someone trying to open the front door from the other side. After letting it happen for about a minute, it then stopped. I walked over and looked out the peephole, but nobody was there. Nothing has happened since, but it still really freaks me out.